majority of the fabrics available in the market are produced by weaving process weaving is the making is a process the fabrics by use of a minimum of two sets of yarns namely the warp and the weft yarns the ways in which the warp and weft interlace with each other change the appearance of the fabric and also change the you know characteristics of the fabrics all woven fabrics are produced with three types of basic interlacements and accordingly all these uh, weaves are called as basic weaves or the fundamental weaves and these weaves are the first one is the plain weave which is very simplest and second is the twill weave and the third one is the satin weave these three basic weaves can be made on a simple loom without any special attachments type of interlacement how it should come is usually plotted on a graph paper in order to help the weaver and uh, this graph paper is uh, called as point uh, paper design or you know weave diagram plain weave and its variations plain weave is the simplest of all the weaves and it is sometimes referred as home spun or a tabby weave here you know the interlacement is very simple now the first filling yarn goes over and under one one warp yarn and when the second filling goes it goes under the first uh, warp yarn where it has gone uh, over in the first instance and thus the across the fabric they will be going over and under the one one warp yarn and thus you know the fabric is being made here and it is something it is resembles like a checkboard and having uh, uh, one filling yarn going over and under one warp yarn and thus it is a very very simple form of uh, producing a fabric and in this very inexpensive because you know only two harnesses are being used here and so this is mainly used for cotton fabrics in order to produce inexpensive cottons then coming to the characteristics of this uh, particular plain weave it has no uh, right and wrong sides and the same thing you know no up and down also because even if you turn it uh, towards uh, wrong side or the right side you know it is same there will not be any difference because there is no design on this particular thing that's why it looks the same and that's why this uh, is not having any uh, design surface and so it becomes uninteresting but you know this uninteresting surface becomes an interesting surface in order to produce printing or any surface ornamentation or even finishing in order to get some designs on the material thread count is more in this then the fabric is going to be uh, very very uh, strong but if the thread count is less you know the fabric is not going to be that strong but here we find that you know the plain weave facilitates more number of interlacements that means at each and every point we have seen one by one and if at each and every point we find that there is an interlacement and this interlacement maximum in case of uh, plain weave when compared to other two basic weaves and when these uh, interlacements are more in number and it will not facilitate more pliability here and so what happens is this uh, particular material when you bend it it wrinkles more and also but it shrinks less because at each uh, interlacement the yarns are going over and under and so even the fabric swells in water and it has no space in order to shrink and thus you know this particular thing will not shrink much and also uh, we may not absorb more water also because of the less space that is present the variation in plain weave we can bring out by different ways the one is that uh, we use different thread counts that means more number of yarns the different fiber content in the yarns yarns of different sizes uh, having a novelty or a textured yarns yarns having contrast colors will be able to produce uh, even variety with these things and then the yarns with high and low twist and also we can combine this high and low twist either in the warp or in the weft or in the warp as well as in the weft and also by spacing of the yarns you know we can leave the space in between and then we can have another yarn over there that also produces a lot of variety here and also with the different types of prints and also different types of finishes will be able to bring out variety by uh, having this uh, variations in the plain weave two other variations are also possible here one is rib weave 
and the other one is the basket weave. This depends upon the thickness of the yarns that are used and also the more number of yarns are used as a single yarn. And the fabrics uh, woven in uh, plain weave or uh, jingam, voile, lawn, cambric, calico, cheesecloth, chins, mustard sheeting, organdy, canvas, tapeta, organza, georgette, chiffon, seersucker, long cloth, shirting and dressing materials all are woven in uh, plain weave. Then uh, coming to the sheer or lightweight fabrics we have uh, lawn, organdy, chiffon, georgette, cheesecloth and tissue cloth it is a jingam, voils and organza these all come under the sheer materials. And if you take the medium weight fabrics the one which is used for the print cloth percale, calico, chins, glazed chins suiting materials, muslin, long cloth, shirting material, sirsaka and jingam and taffeta. These are the materials of having medium weight. And when we take the suiting weight fabrics, that means heavy fabrics, we find cotton suiting material and the casement material and also canvas and tweed and the such kinds of materials. Then coming to the ribbed weave. The ribbed weave is dependent upon the thickness of the yarns that are being used. When the number and the size of the yarns differ, it produces a ribbed or corded effects in plain weave fabrics. So, these uh, ribbed or corded uh, effects are produced by in the warp or filling by varying the uh, size of the yarn, maybe uh, fine yarn with uh, thicker yarns and also or otherwise single yarn with a double yarn. We will be able to produce this kind of uh, ribbed effects by varying the number as well as the size of the yarns. Many rib fabrics are produced by having a heavy filling and uh, also more number of warp yarns. What happens is the uh, weft yarn is thicker and more number of warp yarns which are thin are present over there. It forms a carded effect at that. So, the carded effect is seen towards the filling and not towards the warp yarns. So, this happens with uh, a size or you know it may be uh, the use of uh, uh, two yarns, double yarns instead of single yarns and we have uh, khadi suitings and also dimity or examples for this kind of uh, materials. In this particular uh, ribbed effect, the weft yarn which is used will be thick, maybe it is made out of uh, spun yarn and also given very less twist. So, when the when these uh, uh, I mean loosely twisted yarns are used, the fabric is not going to be that strong because, but when the fabric does not require much strength. For the sake of getting variations, sometimes ribbed fabrics are being used and so, uh, the even the weft yarn is not uh, that strong that will be ok, but if you want to get stronger fabrics in this, it is always better if uh, the weft yarn is completely covered by the finer warp yarns, then the fabric is going to be very uh, strong and it has a better abrasion when compared to the other fabrics ribbed fabrics are reversible you know because uh, both the sides this is going to be the similar and unless you know the thread count is very less otherwise there will not be any up and down or no wrong and right sides for this material. And these materials because they have an interesting surface usually they are not printed, if they are printed then it may have uh, the fabric uh, when up and, up and down as well as uh, uh, right and wrong sides. And the fabrics available in ribbed uh, weave, you know the very popular one is the poplin which is used for most of our apparels. And also we have a taffeta material, faili and also dimity and corded uh, madras shirting, khadi shirting and uh, bengalin, ottoman, broadcloth and such other fabrics which are available. Mostly they are also seen in uh, furnishing materials, these ribbed fabrics are seen in that. Then coming to the basket weave, basket weave is a second variation of the plain weave in which you know uh, the yarns or instead of using a single yarn and plain weave, the more than one yarn is being used and so uh, more than two yarns will go over and under two or uh, more than two warp yarns and thus it becomes something like a basket weave. So, because uh, when it goes one by one only, 
the in a single ion it will not be seen but if uh, a group of ions maybe two or more number of ions go over and under it uh, gives a basket effect and so that's why the name of the basket wave for this particular wave you know many number of po possibilities are there in this maybe either it may be 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 also is possible sometimes both the ions are may not be same maybe two ions will be going over and under three warp ions or three filling ions will be going over and under two warp ions so in this case maybe uh, 2 by 3 or 3 by 5 or 2 by 1 this is also possible in case of uh, this basket weave so basket weave fabrics are very pliable because less number of interlacement that are present here and sometimes it is used uh, for the uh, you know self edges of the sheeting materials because it is going to be little broader when compared to other fabrics the basket weave produces fabrics which are attractive and uh, they do not require much of uh, you know ornamentation on the top but uh, the weave you know is uh, pro produced is not that durable and because uh, slippage occurs in this and also the uh, there is a possibility of shrinkage in these materials and so uh, the, these fabrics are not usually printed or not much of ornamentation is done because as it is you know it has a very good uh, surface very interesting surface and if you want to produce some more interesting surface in this maybe the yarns of different colors can be used in basket weave some of the basket weave fabrics which are available in the market are oxford shirting matty cloth and uh, estate shark skin and things like that twill weave and its variations it is a second basic weave which is very strong when compared to the plain weave it is characterized by having diagonal lines which are called veils on the surface of the fabric and this is due to the presence of the floats a float is a portion of the yarn uh, which will miss the interlacement and go over uh, two or three yarns and then get interlaced and so this portion of the yarn that misses the interlacement is called as the float and twill weave is one in which each uh, you know filling yarn floats across two or more warp yarns with a progression of interlacement by one either to the left or to the right and thus distinct lines are possible for example when we take uh, a simple uh, twill weave the first filling yarn goes over the first warp yarn and then under the two warp yarn second and third warp yarns and it goes over the fourth warp yarn and then it again goes under fifth and sixth and thus across the fabric the interlacement happens like this and then coming to the second filling yarn the second weft yarn goes under the first and second warp yarns and over the third warp yarn and again under four and five and so on like this you know you find that the interlacement point is changing by one point at the interlacement point and thus you know the di diagonal lines are possible to get along with the floats coming to the characteristics of the twill weave and you find that it is characterized by having diagonal lines called as veils and uh, it has uh, no uh, you know up and down but there is right and wrong sides unless it is uh, made out of uh, even twill so there is right uh, right side and the wrong side in this material but there is no up and down for these materials because if the diagonals occur on the warp and on the right side it is by the warp maybe on the wrong side it is by the weft yarns and so there is a right and wrong side but there is no up and down unless it is printed or something happens to these materials the direction of the actually the veil also changes when reversed it may be the direction in the v shape it can come up because at one point the uh, you know direction of the twill changes and it takes a reverse uh, direction and thus there is a possibility of getting the variegation and she fabrics are not usually made in twill weave because it facilitates package of more number of yarns in this so sheer fabrics are not uh, generally made in this and then printing is also not done because uh, twill weave fabrics are having an interesting line and so this is not being spoiled by having the printing over there and then uh, these uh, twill weaves differ you know uh, 
the number of uh, picks and ends that are present in the uh, fiber in the in the fabric you know if the number more number of uh, uh, yarns are present then uh, the veils you know differ in uh, its uh, angle and thus we bring about variations in this particular uh, thing and uh, the simplest uh, twill weave you find that it is it requires three harnesses so one over and under two one over and under two or uh, one two over and under one like that it will be taken and so three harnesses are uh, required for this twill weave and here there are very few interlacements that are present and so it makes it more pliable and also it permits more thread count in this case and thus you know the material uh, will be strong enough and also it has the pliability and wrinkle recovery characteristics because wrinkle recovery happens when uh, the fabric bends you know when the fabric bends what happens is that uh, the yarns present in the form of floats on the surface and so they also bend accordingly and thus they avoid the formation of the wrinkles and uh, so there is a pliability also in this particular uh, thing thus you know when we make it more stronger by having uh, you know more number of yarns in this particular uh, thing and also the yarns are too many in number usually the fabric doesn't show much soil on the surface and thus the cleanliness of the fabric is easier to maintain and uh, maybe these fabrics uh, twill fabrics are also costly when compared to the plain weave fabrics because of the process there are more number of uh, uh, harnesses present and uh, so this becomes a costly affair when compared to the plain weave fabrics the twill weave is valued much for its uh, uh, strength you know firmness and the drapeability then coming to the variations in twill weave there are lot of variations that are possible here and by having uh, you know the prominence of the weave the uh, direction of the line changing the direction of the line changing the number of yarns that are used and also the direction of the diagonal lines in the fabric now the first one is the, the prominence we take the prominence of the uh, uh, you know the veils into consideration we can make it more prominent or less prominent if we want to make it more prominent it is possible to use uh, little thicker yarns or some carded yarns and otherwise if you want to make it very fine finer combed yarns can be used and also uh, double yarns can be used or you know ply yarns can be used in order to make uh, this uh, twill line you know being prominent and thus you can bring variations in this twill weave and then twill weave uh, you know this is uh, the changing the direction of the twill we can also bring uh, you know variations like you know it may be sometimes we see that the line starts from the left top and then a, it uh, uh, progresses into the right bottom or it may start on the right top and it progresses to the left bottom and thus when it starts from the left top and uh, when it uh, progresses towards the right bottom we call it as a left hand twill and uh, when the direction is reversed that means that when the uh, direction is from the right top to the left bottom we call it as a right hand twill weave usually cotton fabrics or left hand twill weave fabrics and whereas wool fabrics are generally right hand twill weaves so twill weave fabrics can also be changed as per the degree of angle of the uh, this particular veil or the diagonal line you know if more number of threads are packed into this you find that the line twill line becomes very steep and if the uh, you know thread count comes down that means the number of yarns that means the difference between the warp and weft is great then you find it becomes steeper the line becomes steeper and uh, if the yarns number of yarns that are uh, used in this warp and weft if the count is less then it may be something like medium you find that it may form around 45 degrees and if the uh, you know thread count is too less then maybe the particular thing will be uh, the veils you know will become lesser than 45 degrees angle and accordingly if the angle is above 45 degrees then we call it as a steep twill if it makes a 45 degrees angle it is called as a normal or regular twill and if it makes less than 45 degrees angle then it is called as recline twill weave recline twill weaves are not that stronger when compared to the steep and also the regular twills 
regular twill or the most uh, uh, wanted type of uh, twill weave. Unless uh, much strength is required, they will be going only for the regular twill and not for the steep twill or the reclining twill. And, uh, and also, we can uh, divide them into again uh, having the number of yarns, either even number of yarns are used or odd number of yarns are used. So, accordingly, we can divide or we can vary them as a even twills and uneven twills. In even twills, what happens is that the weft yarn will be going over and under the same number of yarns, maybe around over 2 and under 1, over 2 and under 1. And then again, when it goes, the interlacement point changes again just one at the place of interlacement, either to the right or to the left, forming either left or right twills. But here we find in the even twill that it is going over to under two, and uh, again the second one also will go uh, over to and under two, and thus you know it forms an even twill. Even when you reverse it, you find the same kind of uh, material, and so even twills are reversible. But when it comes to uneven twills, that means that one yarn goes over one under two, or over uh, the over two under under one like that, and thus you know it will not go on the same equal number of yarns. And so, when uneven fill uh, in case if the weft yarn goes over more number of warp yarns than under, then we call it as a uh, filling or a weft face twill. And if it goes under more number of uh, warp yarns and over less number of warp yarns, then you find more number of warp yarns being present on the surface and thus it becomes you know warp face twill weave. So, warp face it will be or filling face it will be you cannot reverse them because they have the right and wrong sides. So, the warp face it will be uh, you know it uh, when you reverse it you find that there are weft uh, floats and if a weft uh, face it will be is taken if you reverse it you will find that there are warp faced uh, diagonal lines which are present. Thus, we can bring lot of variations like this also sometimes we can bring we can change the colors like in a denim you find and the warp is always colored and the weft is always white. So, the denim is the best example for this kind of variations in twill weave. Fabrics that are available in twill weave and uh, even twills you know you find serge, sura, flannel and warp face twills, gabardine, denim, jeans cloth, khaki and drill. And uh, one of the popular variations in twill weave is the herringbone. In this, you know, the direction of the twill is changed. You know, it is reversed. So it goes maybe from uh, left to left to top to right bottom little bit to towards this one. It progresses, and then suddenly it reverses at one point and takes up the other way. That means that it goes from the left bottom to the right top. Thus, you know, zigzag or V-shaped patterns are possible in this, and it has a very interesting surface. And thus you find that uh, these uh, materials are available mostly uh, for uh, suiting materials and other things. This uh, also uh, sometimes you know we call twill weave with the different names. You know it is it depends upon how many number of uh, harnesses that are being used. We said that there are uh, at least minimum of three harnesses are required for making the twill weave. But sometimes when we are going over, uh, over two under two and all maybe four harnesses are required and maybe it is going under two over three then we need 5 harnesses. In that way, uh, it is called as 3 shaft uh, uh, by, you know, twill weave or 5 shaft twill weave or sometimes even uh, 4 shaft twill weave. So, shaft is a term used for the harness and thus uh, it can be uh, you know called in that way also. So, twill weave is one of the strongest weaves and whenever strength is required and the fabrics are being made in twill weave. Satin weave and its variations. And this is the third basic uh, weave and which is valued for its luster and smoothness. The mode of uh, interlacement is similar to twill weave, but you know the making of this uh, bales that means the diagonal lines are purposely interrupted at the point of uh, interlacements. And here in the satin weave, the first weft yarn goes over the first warp yarn and then under 5 or more number of warp yarns and then over the next warp yarn and again under 5 or more number of warp yarns and so on. And thus you know 
the formation of the diagonal lines are purposely interrupted here. There are few interlacement when compared to the plane weave or also twill weave and this is only for the purpose of producing more luster and smoothness in satin fabrics. When you take the characteristics of this uh, uh, satin fabrics, we have already said that it is they are characterized by having good luster and also uh, smoothness and here filaments are being used and so filaments are usually having good uh, luster when compared to the spun yarns and so filament yarns are being used in the satin fabrics. And this long floats and uh, less interlacements in this uh, particular weave uh, will be able to contribute you know for more number of threads being packed in this and so higher thread count in this satin fabrics are possible when compared to other fabrics even more than the twill weave fabrics. And satin fabrics have strong and right sides and also but there is no uh, up and down for these fabrics. But the high thread count in this fabric contributes to more durability, more strength and then uh, giving body firmness and also repellency for water and other things and also the fewer interlacements uh, will also be helpful in having pliability in these fabrics. And then low uh, count fabrics are not that durable. When the thread count is less, you know, the fabrics are going to be less smooth and less lustrous. All satins irrespective of the number of threads that are present, they slip at the seams and all. And so, while making the garments from these fabrics and uh, much care is taken and uh, making the seams, you know, uh, sealed and so that it will not slip at this particular point and thus, you know, the fabrics can be uh, durable. Many variations in satin fabrics are also possible. You know, when uh, the floats are formed by the warp yarns and also if they are made out of filament yarns and there is more luster and also more smoothness for the satin fabric. But if the fabric is made out of uh, weft floats, not the warp floats, then you find that, you know, the uh, fabric is not that smooth and also not that lustrous. And also by wearing, either by taking the filamentous yarns or the spun yarns, then also we can vary the fabrics. Usually the fabrics with filling floats are called as satin fabrics. This is supposed to be one of the variations in satin. And if the warp floats are present, it is called as the satin fabric. But when we take the, the spun yarns, like cotton you find, you, you cannot have uh, filaments in this. And so, in these fabrics, the spun yarns are present. Even though there are warp floats in cotton, that means that basically it is a spun yarn and it is termed as only satin fabrics. So, satin fabrics again, we can find the variation. The filling floats of the filament yarns, the fabrics are called as satin. Satin fabrics are also with the warp floats are made out of uh, the, the spun yarns. So, both it will be called as the satin fabrics satin fabrics are not that lustrous and not very smooth and so they can be printed also in case of cotton and like chintz and all we get with a uh, sheen on that and in order to improve the sheen sometimes they are calendared and also sometimes they are sheen rised that means these are the finishes that improves the luster of the fabric so that they can be sold like satins in the market. The fabrics in satin weave or rayon satin is present, silk satins are present and damask fabrics and also cotton satin fabrics, cotton chintz and all, they are all available in the market and but few uh, satin materials are only present and uh, these are all uh, wound on the bolts, they are not available in the form of uh, ordinary flat materials, they are wound on the bolts not to wrinkle these fabrics you know for use. Then we have seen how the interlacement is there in all the uh, three fundamental weaves. Now, when you take all other materials which are having some fancy type of ornamentation on the surface, maybe having a figured effects, all these fabrics uh, ha are having one of these definitely basic weave construction in them. So, without the basic construction, you cannot produce any figured weaves or ornamentation that are possible on this. And so, even if it is a jacquard weave having all over design or it may be a Dobby designs with small small designs with having only the borders and mainly small booties 
and all that is possible only with the one of the uh, fundamental way being the uh, background way for all these materials. And so, knowing about the fundamental waves is very very important, but for them you know we cannot do it on a simple loom like this because for fund for making the fundamental looms we use only a simple loom but when we want to carry out those uh, the weaving of those fabrics which are very ornamental which are very elaborate and we need to actually uh, take up the elaborate uh, attachments to the loom or sometimes the loom is entirely different like jacquard looms wherein all the warp yarns are taken as a single and then they can be operated thus you know the fundamental weaves are very very important uh, for any student to learn the weaving